Hello and welcome to QLab. In today's video, we're going to be learning how to make a compass. Now, this is a bit of a new series we're going to be doing on survival science. And I have to apologize for not uploading videos regularly. I've been quite busy, so it's going to be once a month now. Well, let's get started. So this is a little compass end that I had left over, so I thought I could use a pin to balance it on and effectively make a usable compass. That's because all you need to do for to have a compass is to have a magnetic piece of metal that can move relatively freely, so you want to have very little friction acting on it. So if there's just this little pin into that little sort of hole at the, in the middle, then the compass can move very freely and will eventually point north as it is doing now. Let's check it against another compass. Yes, can you see that's pointing north? Lovely. <laughs> so it's working. But if you don't have a bit of a compass left over, well, we can make it using some water. Now what you'll want to get is a needle and a little piece of greaseproof paper. You can see how I've prepared it here. And the greaseproof paper is just to help the needle float. Of course, if it's floating, it can move relatively freely, just like on the pin, without much friction. Now I didn't magnetize this needle, and that just means holding it close to another magnet. And it still works. But it's quite slow, so I sped this up, oh, I think it was about four times. So it's four times the speed it was normally going, as you can see it rotating round and at the line pointing north. Oh, I just knocked the table a little bit, that's why the compass moved. But it does work, however it will work a lot better if you magnetise it. Now it's important that if we bring a magnetic metal like this nail close to them, well, it distorts the field. And so we can actually make the compass point in a different direction. We point towards the piece of metal, in this case, an iron nail. And it's important it's a magnetic metal. Though I didn't magnetize this iron, this nail, sorry, so it was just a plain old nail I got out of a bag. And you can see it working on the commercial of a shot bought compass as well. What I think is really quite neat is when you can see that it can pull this needle around on the water. And you can use it to actually guide like a little boat. You can imagine making a little boat with a needle in it or a little piece of metal in it. And you could move it around with this magnetic effect. I think that's quite neat. And you can see it moves quite quickly. There we go. But it's not just other magnetic metals that can cause this to happen. If you've watched the static videos, well, here's the piece of uh, PVC pipe and I've just rubbed it a bit. And it's got an electrostatic charge. And you can see that that's also being able to distort the direction of the compass. Can you see this needle? It starts to align to the pipe very clearly. So we have to be careful what we make a compass out of. Do you imagine if you made a case for a compass out of a magnetic metal? That wouldn't be very good, would it? <laughs> and so you can see the needle turning to align to the pipe. I thought this was really quite nice to see. It's very reproducible. Yeah, there we go. But you might be wondering, well, how does a compass work? Why does it point north and south? That's a very good question. 
So we can see the Earth pictured here with the North and the South Pole marked. We can get our compass out and if we spin our compass, well, the arrow always points to the north and often it has a back arrow, doesn't it? Points down to the south. But why does this happen? Well, the Earth is a bit, it's got like a big magnet, or we consider it to have a big magnet inside it. And this effect is actually caused by the molten iron in the core and in the mantle. But we're not going to worry about why it happens, but what we can determine from it. So, just like with little magnets, opposites attract. So the north of our little compass wants to point to the south, and the south of our little compass wants to point to the north. And that's where something very interesting actually happens. Because underneath the North Pole, well, technically it's the magnetic South Pole, because all our little north needles point towards it. Another important thing to realize is that the magnetic poles are not exactly the same as the geographic poles. So we can go to the North Pole, but the map says it's here. And actually the magnetic bit, the magnetic South Pole, will be a little bit further away. So that's quite interesting, isn't it? Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that and we'll see you next time.